my channel if you are new. My name is Mary and I'm so happy to have you here for today's self-care Sunday, the day of the week that we come together for our little self-care, skincare, and soul care to talk about love, dating, and the law of attraction. Today's topic was actually requested by one of the subscribers on this channel and they requested that I do a video on things that my SP was feeling and experiencing when I was manifesting him. So I'll probably like do this as like somewhat of a story time slash teaching moment slash what he told me he was feeling breakdown. So I'm really excited for this video. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. I think it's really cool to talk about like, you know, our little, our little wins, our little victories here. So super duper excited about that. Because it is self-care Sunday, I will be doing some skincare while I talk about this subject. And the product that I'm using today is actually the same one I used in I think last week's self-care Sunday, which was the Pacifica Kale Charcoal Ultimate Detox Mask. So when I recorded that video, it was my first time ever using this product. And I have like wide pores, big pores. They get blackheads, whatever. Um, but I've, I've tried over the years a number of those like, you know, blackhead specific masks, like the black masks that are supposed to pull out your blackheads. And they do okay. And so this one just says like, it helps fight blemishes, blackheads, and oils. And let me tell y'all, like it dried as like a light gray, but when I finished filming and I went to the bathroom to wash it all off, I saw that there were like spots on my nose where the light gray was a darker gray and it was like right over my pores. And I'm like, that's weird. And I kind of squeezed it and like, sorry to be gross. We're talking about skincare right now. So many of my blackheads came out like I actually have like a really wide pore it's just like it's always been there it's just like this really wide pore on the side of my nose and it actually like all the stuff came out so I really really like this product and I want to use it again um I just want to use it again so we're going to use this um Oh, and for those who are new to the channel and don't know about this whole self-care Sunday thing, I come here live and in person every Sunday at 9 a.m. So I set this video as a live premiere on YouTube, and by doing so, it gives us a live chat option. So if you're seeing this video after the fact, like you just found it scrolling through YouTube or whatever, I am here on this channel every 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time on Sundays for the self-care Sunday videos, and we're talking about love, dating, law of attraction, and I'm in the chat window just like just hanging out vibing answering questions related to the video or about whatever so it's always a really good time you know if that seems of interest to you hit that little subscribe button all right and I'm gonna use the screen on my camera to put this stuff on okay so here we go um for those who haven't heard my story before uh my husband my now husband he was my SP. We had two breakups in the past. One was in 2019 and one was in 2020. And each of those breakups were about six months. So like pretty big breakups. And um, after the first breakup, we got back together. But I was like really, really anxious because as soon as we got back together after the first breakup, I was afraid I was going to lose him again which then manifested me losing him again, unfortunately. And after that second breakup, I was like, you know what? Mm -mm, no more. I am manifesting this guy back and I am manifesting him for good. And that is exactly what I did. But it took a lot of work and it took a little time. Like so many of us get so impatient when we're trying to manifest something and it doesn't come to us right away. And it's fine to feel impatient, but it's not fine to give up as a result of that impatience. So... Um, let me tell you guys some of the things I was doing wrong during the first breakup and how I switched those things after the second breakup so that I could manifest marriage. Um, after the first breakup, I was doing the thing that so many of us do after a breakup, which is where I was observing and like analyzing everything that he was doing after the breakup and then I was like running and talking to my girlfriends about it. And the problem with that is with the law of attraction, you know, what you focus on persists. And so, you know, anytime he would exhibit behaviors that some people could deem hot and cold, like, cause our breakups were never like clean cut, no contact. We were still seeing each other the entire time pretty much. So our breakups were never like just 
clean break, cold turkey, no more. But sometimes he would like, you know, really be pursuing me and being romantic towards me and doing all this stuff. And then like a week later, he'd be like, you know, we've really got to stop doing this because I don't want a relationship and I feel like I'm leading you on. And then I'd go to my girlfriends and I'd like cry about it. And then they would all like, you know, commiserate with me and like, oh my God, fuck him. And he doesn't know what he wants and he needs to make up his mind and he's such an asshole. And I'm like, yeah, he needs to make up his mind. And all of those things were just affirming his behavior it was just bringing me more of the things that I didn't want. So anytime I was like, oh my God, he's so hot and cold. He's so, he doesn't know what he wants. He just doesn't know what he wants. He's so confused. I was affirming more of that because I'm focusing on that. I'm repeating it. I'm thinking about it. I'm feeling all these emotions related to it. And the people around me are echoing that back to me. And so my universe is like confirming that for me. Like, okay, got it. I hear you loud and clear. I hear all of you. Cool. That's what I'm going to bring you. And so I had to start like shifting my energy, shifting my focus after the first breakup is where I really started digging back into the law of attraction and realizing how bad those behaviors were. And I kind of started shifting it enough to get him back, you know, you know, after that first breakup. But then as soon as I got him back, I did what? I got afraid of losing him again. And so anytime, like if I text him and he didn't text back for like an hour, I'm like, oh my God, it's happening again. It's happening again. He's pulling away from me. And I got in my head and got nervous and manifested a second breakup. So after the second breakup, I was like, okay, girl, get your shit together. Get your shit together and get this guy back once and for all. Keep him like what are you even doing? And so that's when I really started shifting my focus. And whenever he would do that hot and cold bullshit, okay, and my girlfriends would say, what's up with so and so? What's up with him? What's going on? I would just say, oh, we're figuring things out. We're figuring things out. I wouldn't say, oh, he's so hot and cold, or he changed his mind again, or this or that or the other. I would just say, we're figuring things out, because I think that's a pretty good approach to have, where you're not lying to the people around you and being like, we're back together, because you're not yet, you know? And people would probably think you're a little crazy if you were, like, do, you know, doing that. <laughs> but I would say, oh, yeah, we're figuring things out. We're, we're figuring it out. We're going to be fine. We're going to get through this. And then... If and when my friends were like, oh, he's such a dick. What? He doesn't know what he's missing. He doesn't know. I would be like, you know, he's not that. He's not that. We're just figuring some stuff out. Nip that shit in the butt. I would no longer commiserate over things that I didn't want. And, um, oh gosh, I'm going to go down a rabbit hole if I'm not careful. But I did a video on it before. I can do another video elaborating again on this subject. But whenever... He did things that I liked whenever he did things that that made me feel good and that were taking a step in the right direction, be it bringing me lunch or, you know, texting me good morning or good night or wanting to go grab a drink to get like whatever it was, whenever he did something that was like moving in the right direction, I would allow myself to feel good and to celebrate that and to kind of affirm for more of that. And whenever he did something that I didn't like, I would really, really, really do my best to ignore it and not allow it to impact me negatively, like emotionally, because ultimately I knew we were going to get back together. So like, why am I going to let you, you know, not contacting me for one day? Why am I going to let that ruin my whole day when I know we're ultimately going to end up married? Not sweating the small stuff. <clears throat> so that's kind of what I was doing while I was manifesting him. Now let's talk about what he was doing, what he was thinking, and what the universe was doing while I was manifesting him. So no surprise, no shocker, for the first and second, I mean for the two breakups, like in his mind, leading up to those breakups, he was unsure about the relationship. He was unsure because like he, he didn't know going into all of this, if he wanted the same things as me. He didn't know if he wanted the wife and the babies and the picket fence and all that. Or if he did want it, he didn't know if he wanted that right now in his life. And so um, those are the kind of things that were in his life. Those are the kind of things that were in his mind leading up to the breakups where it was like, hey, she's cool and I really love her a lot, but I don't know that I want the same things as her. Like that's what he was thinking first and second breakup. And then um, during our first like 
breakup period, those first six months um, during breakup number one, he was he was feeling exactly what like my girlfriends and I were talking about. He was feeling confused where like I would like pull him in like a magnet and I wasn't even doing anything intentionally to do it. He just like he loves me a lot and he couldn't stay away from me. So even if I wasn't contacting him and I was giving him space and I was leaving him alone, he was still constantly pursuing me. But then he would do what? He would get confused. He wouldn't know what he wanted. He would pull away. He would be hot and cold. He was mirroring all of the things that I was echoing to my friends and they were, you know, echoing back to me. And that was kind of throughout the first breakup. During the second breakup, when I was like, nope, it's time to get my shit together and manifest this dude as my husband, um, that's when everything really started shifting. And so... um, you know, it takes, again, it takes time. So we were broken up for six months. The first few months of that breakup, he was very much like he was during the first breakup of, I don't, you know, I love this girl, but I don't want to be married. I don't want to have kids. I'm not ready to settle down, like all this stuff, you know? And it kind of took time for his mental state to catch up to what I was manifesting, what I was putting into the universe, into my subconscious, into the shared collective superconscious, and then make its way to him, to his subconscious mind, and then his conscious mind. It kind of took some time to get there. Um, but he started having thoughts where he was thinking, like, <clears throat> it's, it's so funny. Like, one time he sent me a screenshot of a conversation he was having with one of his friends. And I don't think he realized like what was the previous conversation that they were having, or maybe he did. I don't like, I asked him about this after the fact and he doesn't remember doing it, but he sent me a screenshot of a conversation he was having with one of his like homeboys where he was basically talking about not being sure if he's ready for marriage, right? But the fact that he was bringing it up like to his friends, talking about marriage to his friends, like, is this something I'm ready for, blah, 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 blah. And we weren't even together is like, it's crazy to me because those seeds were being planted in his mind. He didn't wake up one day and go, oh, I'm ready to marry her. He started going like, well, why am I freaked out about marriage? And I wonder what marriage is like. And I wonder what marriage with her would be like, you know? And, And so these seeds were being planted. So it kind of started with that. But the really big turning point is that um, my husband is in the military. I'm not sure if I've ever mentioned that before, but he's in the military. And he needed to go to Virginia for training for like seven weeks. And we live in California. We live in Southern California. So he was scheduled to go to this training for like seven weeks. And he knows people already in Virginia. Um, He knows a bunch of people, but he was looking at staying with one of two people. He was either looking at staying with his cousin, who is a married woman with a husband and two kids living in suburbia, or he was looking at staying with this one friend of his that he had served in the military with, like, back when he was, like, 19. And um, I hate this guy. I hate this guy so much. I'm not going to, like, go into a lot of details... He's not the kind of guy you want your SP hanging out with if you want them to get back with you. He's the kind of guy, like, he's just not a good dude. He's not, like, very F-boy, all right? You feel F-boy, this guy. So he was like, I'm either going to stay with my cousin or I'm going to stay with this F-boy. And so I was like, "Uh uh-uh. He's not staying with that F-boy. He's not going to have seven weeks of running around doing God knows what in Virginia. No, he needs to stay with the cousin. And so I started like affirming for that. I've never met that cousin before. Didn't know if she was going to be in my corner or not once he got out there. But I'm like, he needs to stay with the cousin. He does not need to stay with the F boy. So I'm like affirming, affirming, affirming. Like he's in Virginia and he's staying with the cousin. And thankfully, that is exactly what happened. He went to Virginia And he stayed with the cousin. And the time that he was there, it was very transformative for him where he got to see the the closeness and the companionship and the love that she shared with her husband and and that family environment with the house and the two kids and the dog. And he was like, you know what? I, I do think I want that. And if I want that, there's no one else I would want that with but Mary. So like, what the hell am I doing? And 
So while he was in Virginia, he was still like constantly reaching out to me, reaching out to me, reaching out to me. And it's so funny because when he went to Virginia, we agreed, like we spent the weekend together before he left. Um, it was in like July of last year. And we agreed like, hey, listen, if you really don't want to be in a relationship with me, then let's take this physical separation that we're going to have where you're on the other side of the country for like two months and let's take that time to move on with our lives. And that's what we had agreed to. But the whole time he was out there, he was just like contacting me. He was telling me about like presents that he had gotten me. Like literally like the week leading up to him coming back, he like was talking to me about this new app on his phone. And I was like, oh, that sounds pretty cool. And he was like, yeah, once I get back, I'll stop by. I can put the app on your phone. <laughs> Because he was already like thinking of, of reasons to be able to see me as soon as he got back. Even something as simple as he bought me a coffee cup. Oh, and he wanted to put an app on my phone. He wasn't even back for 24 hours and he already came up with a totally different excuse. He needed to come by to pick up a car charger from me. So like... So funny. Um, but what I'm saying is, I told you guys this is gonna be a little bit like story time. But what I'm saying is that, like everything from like, <clears throat> what I'm saying is that, you know, you hear about how absence makes the heart grow fonder. So everything from from when my energy shifted, everything in the universe started aligning in such a way as to make my end goal marriage with this dude a reality where he had to go to Virginia for two months on training and while he was out there he stayed with his cousin and he got to be in this very familial environment that kind of like demystified that life for him and made him want it and and during that time apart he really started like thinking a lot about me and having that future and like all that stuff and meanwhile I'm out here and though I'm affirming and I'm I'm manifest I'm visualizing and I'm journaling and I'm doing all this stuff. I was also like dating other people and living it the hell up because I knew ultimately I was going to get my end goal. And so I was just like living my life in the meantime. <laughs> so once he came back, he came back September of last year. He starts like orbiting me again, like he had always done, you know, where he's like, test in the waters. I don't know what I want. Uh, 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 right. Just orbiting me. And then, um, real, really weird twist in the story, really sad twist in the story. But late last September, um, my horse died and she died on a day that we were supposed to go to brunch and I was planning on cutting all ties with him at that brunch where I was like, I can still keep affirming for this guy from forever away, but I'm not going to have him just orbiting me like... It was just weird. It was just weird. Like, it didn't feel good to me anymore. I'm all about doing what feels good to you. And it was like, if we're going to be together, we're going to be together. And if not, you need to stop contacting me. And so we're supposed to go to this goodbye brunch. But my horse, uh, she was very, very old. And she, um, she went down. I don't know if anyone knows about horses. But when they go down and can't get back up, it's typically not a good thing. And in her case, sadly, it wasn't. And so he came out here for that. And he was like comforting me as the vet helped my horse cross over. And we canceled our brunch, our brunch plans. But then I was like, I still want to have this conversation. You need to get, just leave me alone. Like, I want to be a wife. I want to be a mother. And if you don't want those things with me, then I'm going to go find someone who does. And he's like, okay, cool. I'm going to leave you alone. I won't contact you anymore. And I'm like, okay, cool. And then literally the next day, he called me and I'm like, I don't even know if I should answer, but he never calls. Like he's more of a texter or he calls me all the time now. He calls me all the time now, but he didn't call me as much then. And so I'm like, why is he calling me? Like, why would he not text me? Maybe it's an emergency. And I answered and it was an emergency. He was just like, I want to see how you're doing after your horse died. I was fine. Um, so that was like on a Sunday and then on Tuesday or Wednesday, he just started blowing my phone up and he had never done this before where he started blowing my phone up, like calling me back to back to back. And I didn't answer. And I was like, I'm not going to answer this, you know? <laughs> and then he texted me and he was like, you know, sorry for calling so much. Never mind. And I ignored it. And then he was like, I just missed you. And I ignored it. And then he's like, but never mind. And I ignored it. <laughs> and it was like, I was like, oh shit, I got him right where I want him. 
he's going crazy now. And that's exactly like I had been manifesting like he's crazy about me. I'm all he ever thinks about. I'm all he wants. He's obsessed with me. And then finally in that moment, I was like, oh shit, we're here. We're here. And I was telling my friends like, well, not all my friends, but I called a couple of my friends and I was like, it's happening. It's happening. Like he's blowing my phone up. And he's, I started getting a call from like a weird number. I think he like went on Google voice and made up like a fake number and tried calling me from that to see if I would answer it. Cause it was literally like right in line with after all of his calls from his number, then I started getting calls from some other number. <laughs> it was so funny. So that was on like a Tuesday or Wednesday. And on Thursday he texted me and he was like, um, will you please come to dinner with me tonight? I want to talk to you about something. And I'm like, he's going to ask me to get back together. Um, and, and he did. Oh, and, and I forgot to mention, um, in the midst of all this, he sent two dozen roses to my house and all this other stuff, like to try to win me back. And so I was like, yeah, he's, he's going to ask me back together. And so he did. And, um, that was like October 1st of last year is when that happened, when we got back together. Um, and, at our, at our get back together dinner, he said the damnedest thing to me. And if you guys are ever like, you know, not sure about how the law, of, you know, whether or not the law of attraction works or whatever, let this put your mind at ease. He's sitting across from me at the table and he just looks up at me and he goes, did you cast a spell on me? And he says it like, kind of like he was joking, but kind of not. And I was like, ha ha ha, like that he told a joke. And he's like, yeah, no, really, did you cast a spell on me? And I'm like, dude, why are you even asking me this? Like, you don't, he's, he's atheist. He doesn't believe in anything, you know? And so I'm like, you don't believe in any of this like spiritual stuff that I'm into. Why would you even ask me that? And he goes, I, I literally can't stop thinking about you. I've never had this before. I literally can't stop thinking about you. And I'm like, you don't say, you don't freaking say so the whole he's obsessed with me i'm all over thinks about blah, blah blah that's a good one that's a good one to use y'all because he straight up told me and then once we were back together and everything was paradise again as it should be um he did tell me that while he was in virginia he was totally going through this like transformative process where the things that were, you know, scary and weird to him before suddenly became very appealing. And he started thinking about what would life be like for me as a husband, as a father, with Mary as my wife, like, what would that be like? And so um, his thought process throughout the breakups, the getting back together, everything, like since getting back together and talking through it all, um, his thoughts were mirroring exactly what I was affirming for the entire time because everyone is you pushed out. And so I, I have to remember that now. And that's why I don't listen to a lot of songs about breakup or cheating or heartbreak or anything because I don't want to be singing and mirroring those kinds of things out into the universe. So even now where we're like happily married and I have the life that I want, I will... Um, I still affirm for he's so in love with me. He's so obsessed with me. You know, I say things like every day we love each other more. I'm happy and safe in my relationship. I have such a great husband. I have the best husband. My husband loves to spoil me. My husband loves to take care of me. All of those things. So now that I have him, I'm able to continue affirming just, you know, in a different way than before. And I know that he will reflect those things that I'm putting out in the universe because that's how it works. And apparently we have this like really, really, really great connection. And he's very sensitive to what I'm putting out there. And before that was working against me, but now it's working for me. So this video turned out a little bit longer than I thought that it would because I wanted to kind of give you the whole history, what I was doing, what was happening and moving in the universe and what he was feeling as those things were aligning and kind of where we are now. Now we've been married for over two months you know, starting a family this year, everything is perfect. And we're both very, very happy and very much in love. So I hope that you found this video to be helpful. If you want to hear more stories about my SP and I, let me know what you'd like to hear. Drop them in the comment section below. And this mask has been on way too long, but I'm curious to see what's come out of my nose. Is that gross? Sorry. See you soon. Bye friends.